Hey, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a um, little project that I just decided just to do. I was actually rummaging around kind of like my PC parts and stuff like that. I was like, I looked at a couple of things. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what I can build with this. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. All right. So here we, we just have a regular desktop. Now, um, this was uh, actually my first Windows 7 PC. Not my first PC, but my first Windows 7 PC. Uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, uh, I went from going and getting a laptop that had this uh, horrible operating system to uh, Windows 7 that I technically just fell in love with. This system uh, technically has an Athlon 4, which, would just, which was an AM2 Plus, I believe, socket. And I believe the, the amount of RAM that came with it, I think it was like 4 gigs. But I did upgrade it eventually to 8 gigs. Now, why am I bringing all this up with this obsolete device uh, and what I'm going to be doing with it? So, I had this available. Technically, the, everything is working. Power supply worked for it. You know, motherboard, everything was working. But uh, what I want to do with it is I actually want to do an emulating box using this hardware. Now, of course, um, the, the internal graphics, I don't know if it was going to be enough, maybe enough for maybe uh, NES, SNES games and all that good stuff, little low end stuff. But I wanted to see if, uh, let's say if I throw maybe some GameCube, maybe some Wii emulators, um, we'll see if it can handle it. Now, one of the things that uh, I did upgrade, I did it upgrade it. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I included on this PC. All right, so as you can see here, uh, there's a couple of things that you're like, hey, that's not supposed to be there. Well, those are the parts that I technically upgraded. So uh, let's just start with the first thing, power supply. The power supply this device had, I believe it was maybe a 250 watt, 300 watt unit. Um, really didn't have the connectors for the PCIe uh, cable right here or for the graphics card itself. So I had to basically install a 450 watt unit. Now, I did check the volt, uh, not the voltage, but the wattage for this graphic card, graphics card, and 450 is more than enough for this. All right, and the graphics card. So we do have an MSI RX 480. Now this does have, uh, I believe it's eight gigs of GDDR5. So we do have that. Now, luckily, I mean, the card isn't somewhat big, but I mean, it, it fits in this case, uh, or barely fits, I should say. Another component I also upgraded was the hard drive. So I, I actually did have a solid state drive there, but I actually upgraded it to a 250 gig SSD. And keep in mind, these components are technically, I mean, the graphics card is fairly old, actually. This one it was actually the one that I was actually using on my main system. And now that we have all these components, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I installed the operating system and how I got this all rolling. The first thing we're going to go right ahead and do to get that computer operational, or what I did to get it operational, is of course I went right ahead and opened up Chrome and we actually went to, now we're going to go right ahead and go to the website Laka. So let's go right ahead and do that right now. Now that we actually Googled Laka, now we can actually see that we have, the actual website is www.laka.tv. So if you go here. So open source gaming console, cool. So let's go ahead and get Laka. Uh, oh, why does this website have ads? Okay, Laka is still under heavy development, which is fine. Come on, get me there. Okay, so now that we're uh, in this page, of course, we're gonna go ahead and download uh, the image for Windows. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now here you get a bunch of different, you know, uh, hardware that it actually supports. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, you know, this is where you can actually find it. I actually, on my tutorial to do the, this exact same thing, I, technically I came to this website to write a hand image. I believe it was a Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff. Even, I can't believe it, even the Nintendo Wii. But for the, the hardware that I'm gonna be using, it's just gonna be a generic PC. Okay, now that we're here, we're gonna go right ahead and download Laka for 64-bit CPUs. All right, so once you have the file downloaded, we're gonna go right ahead and unzip it. 
So if you don't have, um, what is it, WinZip or anything like that, you can go right ahead and get 7-Zip for free and actually go right ahead and extract it. That's exactly how I'm going to be doing it. So you just right click, oops, right click, 7-Zip, extract here. There we go. So we have it extracted. Now, the other software we're going to need is going to be this Win32 Disk Imager. So you can actually find this for free as well. So we're going to go ahead and open it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in our USB thumb drive. So as you can see right here, I already have mine connected. And then for the file name, we're going to go ahead and look for that image. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Once that image is actually located, uh, which is most likely going to be in your downloads folder, uh, now we can actually go right ahead and click on write. Now it's going to warn us uh, writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. It's fine. We're going to click on yes. Now this process is going to take some time. So I'm going to go right ahead and let this run and then we'll be back shortly. And there we go. So it did take a while, but it finally finished. So let's go right ahead and boot up into that desktop computer. All right, so now we need to go ahead and boot into that USB device. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so in here in the options, we're gonna go ahead and type installer. Now, this is most likely gonna probably boot into the live CD if you don't do this quick enough. So if uh, that does happen, just go ahead and just basically reboot the device. Okay, so we're in the main menu of this. So here, of course, we're going to do install locker, hit enter. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and install it on the actual hard drive. Now, if you remember, I actually said that I installed a 250 gig SSD. Well, for this demonstration, I actually plugged in 120 because I already have everything kind of loaded up. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through just with this installation. So here, we're just going to go right ahead and select the actual... SSD, hit enter. If you want to continue, the contents of this target disk will be wiped. We're going to click on yes. Uh, last chance. Yeah, of course. Go ahead and install it. Now, if I remember correctly, the installation shouldn't really take that long. So it should take a couple of minutes and it should finish. Okay, there we go. So lock installation complete. You may now remove the installation media and reboot. So there we go. So just hit enter. Um, at this point, you can just power down the, the machine and let's go ahead and boot into this. Alrighty, there we go. So as you can see now, so we have Laka running and uh, yeah, everything is ready to go. So I just wanted to uh, tell you this. So two things that actually happened when I was actually troubleshooting it initially. Now, the first thing was because this desktop didn't have Wi-Fi, only had LAN. So when I imaged it, it didn't really pick up the LAN portion of it. So one of the things I had to do or I actually figured out was go right ahead and connect the uh, connect it to your switch or router and then image it. And then as soon as the image applies, it actually picks up that you have an ethernet uh, port on there. So you could go right ahead and you know, actually get this with internet and start importing uh, some of your playlists. Or I shouldn't say playlists, but I should say ROMs. Now, the second thing I actually bumped into was because this, um, this graphics card has several HDMI ports. Now, I mean, they, they all work, no, nothing's wrong with it, but when I was actually playing a certain video games, or actually all video games, the, you couldn't really hear the audio, so you can actually play it and you know do what you need to do, but the, the game audio really wouldn't come through until I figured it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I actually did to resolve that. Here we're just gonna go into settings and we're gonna go into audio. In audio, you actually go into output and then we're gonna go scroll down here to devices and then you can actually, I don't know if you're, you're able to see that, but you're actually able to change the HDMI uh, ports that are available, or yeah, the ports that are available. So from one, two, uh, I'm sorry, from zero, one, two, and three. Um, so for me, it's basically just uh, two. So I just left it there and it, it everything started working again. How I'm actually gonna be playing this, uh, I'm actually technically just connecting, uh, what is it, uh, an Xbox One controller, just basically physically connecting to it and everything's working. Now, I did test it out on some, some ROMs, and it is a lot better than, than the Raspberry Pi, um, you know, uh, device that I was actually using. I actually just, I was just testing it out, and 
Unfortunately, I was like, you know what? I I'm gonna see if I could actually get a desktop to do it. And I'm impressed. Yeah, so I'm actually happy that, uh, you know, actually this is working great. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, keep on uh, playing retro games and let's see how that goes. Alrighty, everybody. Well, that is the end of this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and we will catch you on the next one.